I'm making this SOLIDWORKS study in response to a discussion we've been having on the Members Forum, which turned into an interesting technical debate on whether or not a longer wheel arbor pivot will produce more friction than a shorter pivot if the applied torque stays the same. If you've found this video through a search engine or up on YouTube and would like to see the actual discussion, I'll, I'll put a link to the forum thread in the description below this video. So uh, rather than change the length of the pivot, which is, is uh, a little difficult for me to do, changing it back and forth in size, all I'm going to do is just uh, move it further, the, the whole wheel and arbor and pivot further into this hole in this plate uh, uh, to have more pivot and contact, move it out like it is right now to have uh, less, less contact uh, with the plate. Of course, this is just a plate. Um, I just made it transparent so we can see the pivot. It's actually... Um, uh, a brass plate. Uh, it doesn't look like brass, but it's a brass plate. And um, let's keep it transparent though. That way we can see uh, exactly how much of the pivot is actually inserted into the hole here. Now, because we're just looking for a simple visual representation of what happens when we add or subtract pivot length, we won't need to go into uh, coefficients of friction between the materials or other overly complicated stuff that uh, just get my head spinning. So uh, SOLIDWORKS will take care of all of that for us and hopefully spit out some simple torque info in inch pounds or newton millimeters that we can understand. All we're really looking for here is a significant change in torque numbers when pivot length has changed. So by seeing an increase or decrease in the torque numbers needed to maintain the same RPM of the wheel assembly, we should get a good idea of whether pivot length changes make any difference at all. Now, for our first study, I've given the, this wheel a, a small torque value to rotate it at a given RPM. Again, the assigned values aren't important here, as we're just looking for a significant change in torque when we move the pivot deeper into the brass plate. I haven't applied any resistance from oil viscosity changes at this point, since right now we just want to determine whether or not any increase in friction occurs when moving the pivot deeper into the hole. Also, it's important to note here that the pivot is slightly smaller than the hole diameter, so total contact between the pivot and the hole wall doesn't occur, but rather only a small section between the two are in contact. So if the force from the preceding wheel, which is invisible here, was straight down, then only the lower portion of the hole and the underside of the pivot would be in contact. Although enough torque has been assigned to rotate this wheel assembly at a given RPM, we're having the torque represented as zero with the pivot in its shallowest position, where minimal contact is made between the pivot and the hole. So as you can see here on the plot, uh, we are zeroed out. What we're looking for next will be any significant increase in torque after we increase pivot depth. Now you'll notice in that plot, uh, that plot was plotted in inch pounds. Uh, we'll, I'll also use Newton millimeters. All right, I'm just going to change the dimension and bring that pivot in. So bear with me for a second here. And then we'll run it, uh, run the plot again. And that should bring it in right here. Okay, that looks good. So I need to render render at one time here. I'll have to run it again after this, but uh, in real time. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and bring the plot up and then I'll, I'll uh, render it real time one more time here. Okay, there's, there's the plot. Uh, let's, let's do it real time one more time to make sure. But the way it looks right here, it, it's very little. I mean, that's, that's uh, uh, an inch pounds. It's just, just barely above zero. So there's a tiny increase in, in uh, friction, um, but it's so insignificant. If, that, it, it, if you get into the rubber materials, uh, that type of thing, that you'll see a big difference. But with metals, it's not, uh, not even noticeable. This is in uh, um, Newton millimeter, again, very insignificant, 0.209. So 
we can pretty much say it's it's even really had uh, no effect whatsoever okay now before we move into the analysis study of just how oil viscosity changes over time might affect power loss with changes in pivot length I just wanted to point out that this wheel assembly is a true representation of a wheel in a British anvil chiming movement. And this wheel is used in a tutorial animation that I've made explaining how the chiming mechanism works. I'll show you in just a second that the actual size of mass of this virtual wheel is almost exactly the same as the physical wheel in the mechanism. So the torque plot results that we end up with will be very close to real life conditions. So first, uh, let's check the mass of this uh, assembly. And what we have here is 3.33 grams. Uh, what I'm going to do is convert that into penny weights, because I have a scale that measures penny weights. And I've got the uh, chart right here, or the, the website to do that. It's 3.33. Uh, we come up with 2.1412, or 2.141 penny weight. So I'm going to go over to my penny weight scale. And I'll take the actual wheel and stick it on the penny weights scale and we wanted 2.141 and that is pretty darn close as I mentioned a minute ago this wheel is part of a British anvil chiming animation tutorial that I've made This is the wheel up here. Of course, this wheel rotates many times for every rotation of a wheel further down the train. And since there's much less power left at the upper end of the gear train, it would require very little resistance to stop our wheel from rotating as compared to the wheels below it. Dirt and thickening oil packed between the pivots and holes of our wheel would bring it to a screeching halt while wheels further down the train might hardly be affected by the same amount of resistance. I've gone ahead and added some resistance at the contact points between the pivot and the hole wall to represent an aged viscous oil. I've exaggerated this number since we're only dealing with one pivot in this study and I wanted to make sure that there's enough friction or, or drag to give us a noticeable difference in the torque plot data. Uh, again, what we're looking for here is a significant change in the numbers when we alter the pivot depth from shallow to deep. So let's move the pivot out to the shallow position for our first torque plot test. Looks good. And I'll render it, and then we'll do a real-time run. Okay, there's our plot at 0.206. See if that's what we get. Yep. Okay, we have a point two oh six uh, inch pounds at the shallow depth here. Let's check uh, Newton millimeter. So we're looking at twenty two point two seven two, which I'll write down here. And let's go ahead and bring in our depth, our pivot depth, and. Uh, see if we get much of a variation here. Okay. Okay. That looks good. Let's do a run here. Okay, that's a render, and we're getting uh, 1.951, I guess, uh, inch pounds, go to Newton millimeters. Okay, yeah, we're at uh, 220.380, and we were at uh, 22.272 or something like that. So that's, that's a couple of hundred Newton millimeters more by bringing that pivot in. 
And again, we have 1.951 inch pounds uh, with full pivot contact, and we had 0 0.206, so we're seeing a difference of 1.745 inch pounds. Now, again, I, I've added enough resistance here to probably equal the effects of chewing gum packed between the pivot and hole, but this gives us a good idea of how a longer pivot in contact with a wall of the bearing hole uh, for the total length of the pivot will be affected by oil viscosity changes or gummy dirt as compared to a shorter pivot subjected to the same viscous oil. So I guess to summarize, and, and this is just my opinion, which could be completely wrong, but <laughs> uh, to summarize what the study results show uh, would be that very little change occurs between a shorter and longer pivot when no external holding forces like coagulated gummy oils or are grabbing the outer surface of the pivot. But when these conditions do exist, then the differences are quite pronounced. And possibly these clock movements that we occasionally see come across the, the bench with shorter pivots on the wheel arbors of the lower powered wheels toward the end of the train have been made shorter to allow for longer running times between cleanings. These movements may work fine uh, having no problem completing their eight day runs when first coming out of a factory, but, but maybe after a couple of years, they just don't have enough power to, to make it for a full eight day run time uh, to overcome the, the forces working against them in the, in the form of oil viscosity changes. Now, if this is the case, the question would be, who shortened the pivot? Uh, was, was this something that was done at the factory after discovering that the movement had a flaw? Or is this something that a repairman has done to eliminate a future return problem? Or is my conclusion completely wrong and these shorter pivots have absolutely nothing to do with the loss of power? You know, uh, William on the, the forum uh, had suggested the possibility that these pivots may have been made shorter just for the ease of assembly. That, that actually makes perfect sense. So uh, we can all draw our own conclusions here. Uh, it is an interesting subject though. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So please comment below and, and uh, any, any uh, links you'll find below in the description. Uh, and also, uh, if you'd like to go to the forum, the forum, forum link will be there too.